Action Movie Dad here, and no need to consult a mirror, you're looking great today. Welcome to VFX SideQuest, where today we're creating some procedural grime, and then we're creating this crazy effect inspired by the Matrix Resurrection trailer. It's your classic into the looking glass effect, and if this render gives you deja vu, perhaps it's a glitch in the Matrix. Or perhaps it's because you may have seen us create it on an episode of VFX and Chill, a live weekly talk show where Seth Worley and I break down visual effects from movies and TV shows, all while you hang out in the chat, making helpful suggestions, or perhaps just making fun of two humans just <laughs> trying to do their best. It's literally perfect! But seriously, it's a lot of fun. It's live every Friday at 10 Pacific. It's like a VFX YouTube video that you can talk to through typing. We like to spend a few hours just improvising a variety of effects each episode or talking to industry experts, but I know that you're busy and so I've also taken the liberty of condensing and extracting this lesson so you can have it in one simple upload to the cranium. All right, so the first step is to film it, and you'll need to end up with a subject and probably its real reflection. And that's because the angles of reflections are very important. Now it's possible that if your camera is right up against the glass, you could get away with just kind of mirroring the image, but more than likely your angle is over here somewhere like this, and you won't be able to get away with just flopping the shot. But there are a couple of ways you could fake this. Since a mirror is basically just another angle of the same object, you could set up two cameras with their positions and angles effectively reflected around the central line that you consider the mirror plane. If you film at these two angles, one camera films the subject, and the other is effectively the reflection camera. And as I'm recording this, I realize that Cinecom already did a great explanation of this method, like three weeks ago. So I'm going to stick with summarizing the method that Seth and I came up with five weeks ago, live. So what I'm really saying, Cinecom, is, is that you should come hang out with us uh, on VFX and Chill. We'll make some cool stuff. Uh, Call me, you know, uh, through typing. Anyway, I went the extra cheap route, just filming with an actual mirror right up against the green screen. So I moved my hand toward the mirror, kind of like this. And then next, I can throw them into After Effects, where I can isolate these elements using Primat Keyer, plus a little roto brush to erase this uh, white frame here. I'll call this comp the keyed footage, and you know what, I'm gonna do something that I wish I had done live, you know, just dealing with these horrible colors I got filming on my phone with a mix of daylight and LEDs, just the best conditions to film green screen footage in, really. But since these elements are all isolated now, all I gotta do is apply CC toner using five colors I sampled from an image with better color, and now I look a little less like a vampire. I'll pre-comp these keyed arms, and then I'll use a garbage mat to separate the subject from the reflection. And with these as separate elements, I can cheat the illusion of my hand passing into the mirror by basically masking off this hand at an imaginary point and doing the same thing but mirrored for the reflection layer. And now I can kind of scale up and move over the reflection a bit so the result will be something kind of like this. And now hands don't just phase into mirrors like this in this straight line. We gotta simulate some perspective clipping here. We could do this manually with a few mask keyframes, but there's also a trick that I'd like to do that might be easier. I will stick with this very rigid cutoff line from the mask, but then I'll add a matte choker and the set matte effect. So on my matte choker, I'll dial the gray level softness down to about three for both chokers. I'll set choke one way down to a negative value. And now as I turn up the geometric softness two, we get this kind of fake volume. And in fact, I could even set keyframes for this value. And then as the arm gets wider, as I dial it up, you'll notice that this stub is nicely rounded off for us. You could even dial up the number of iterations down here to enhance this if your object were larger. And now that you've got this arm disappearing into a fixed plane on the wall, uh, we could assist that illusion by adding some subtle ambient occlusion right where the arm is making contact. Uh, for this, I will use CC Light Sweep, uh, kind of counterintuitive, but I can do this by adding it to the same layer and then placing the center of the sweep right here, setting the angle to zero, and then I'll set the color to black and the light reception mode to composite. 
And then you could dial this sweep amount up and down until you just get a nice little bit of shadowing. And also do me a little favor and slide the light sweep up above that set matte effect, just a little cleaner. Now let's reveal our reflection layer again and add a couple of mask keyframes to make sure that this reflection hand is disappearing properly behind that foreground hand. Now because I was cheating the hands closer together, there are some perspective mismatches, but most of them I can overcome just by adding a few position keyframes to the reflection element. All right, so playing this thing back, we've got the reflection thing working pretty well. Now, because this piece of footage is cheated over here like this, uh, we're not filling the whole frame. So I'm just gonna quickly attach the hand and the reflection to a null that I can scale up and position over here, just so my footage is properly covering the frame. Also, totally forgot about symmetry, so let's go grab that CC light sweep, copy it from the foreground hand, and paste it onto the reflection, and just place it right here. And once that's done, let's go ahead and add an environment. Um, I grabbed this image from PX here, it's kind of a dark room, and I'll just crop down to a little section right here. Uh, I'll lasso out this little slat of wood, and copy and paste it over here, brighten it up a bit, so it can kind of function as the imaginary frame of our mirror. And then once that's in place, I'll also duplicate and flip it around so you kind of see it reflecting its own frame. And even though the environment around it doesn't necessarily look reflected, you can see that once I import and place it here, the visual shorthand just makes you feel like it could be a mirror frame. And now, you know what? I think we are ready for some mirror ripples. So let's create a new comp called Ripple. We'll add a 50% gray solid, and then another solid above that, to which we will add the radio waves effect. Radio waves is perfect for creating just nice little rings that expand out forever, or for like two and a half seconds, whatever works for your comp. But the basic idea is we will move this ripple comp into our mirror comp and make it a 3D layer so we can place it right where our mirror waves would be happening. Now, to better assist with visualizing the speed and size of these radio waves, I will select my mirror comp by its tab up here and then go to View, New Viewer, and this creates a second composition window. And you notice this little lock here is locked. And so now we can click over to my ripple timeline and add some keyframes over here. And we'll see them update in proper perspective over here. So I can adjust the settings of the radio waves so they are white and thicker and they fade in and out over their lifespan. I'm also gonna add some keyframes to the frequency just to create the right number of waves to correspond with my footage. And now that that motion is working, it's time to turn these simple rings into something that'll work more nicely as a displacement map. So let's start by adding some fast box blur to this radio wave level, so these waves are nice and soft. And then I'll add some radial shadow, which should create a nice little dark halo, so that displacement also has some dark spots too. And anything that remains 50% gray will basically not be affected. And last, I'll add some turbulent displace just to add a bit more wobbliness to this map. Now back in our mirror comp, I'll turn my ripple map all the way to opaque. And then I'd like to pre-compose it, moving all of the elements into a new comp. And in that comp, I'll add a gray solid just to fill out this empty part of frame here. And now you can see that back in this main comp, this ripple is ready. It's a full displacement map covering the whole screen. I can actually hide it because it won't be used until a little bit later. And in the meantime, this mirror is kind of too clean to exist in the grimy dystopian future. And aren't you tired of glass that's too clean? Trying to escape from a glass box, but no one believes you because your glass is too clean. I think we need to construct some grime. Is there an architect in the house? For any reality to be sufficiently plausible, it is necessary to unconsciously perceive imperfections all around us. Ergo, we have replicated the imperfections your kind feels so imperfect without. This template is created entirely procedurally. Concordantly, nothing is real, nothing sampled, just solids. Expressions. A harmony of mathematical precision. 
They are infinitely configurable combinations of the randomness your kind craves. The perfect solution for your imperfect world. Wow, okay. Uh was expecting more of a zany infomercial vibe there. So, uh, it's an After Effects template. It's got dials to create random smudges. I call it the, uh, the, the smudge generator. So, I've rendered off a unique frame of smudginess, and I'll place it right here in my comp, and I'll apply some CC power pin to put things in perspective. And now, we come to my favorite part of these videos, where we take these five layers that still look pretty rough, and use VFX Super Comp to create some magic. I'll select my five layers and apply VFX Super Comp. And it looks so silly, it's just this hand reaching into this blobby gray thing. But watch this, let's convert this uh, blobby gray thing's layer type to a displacement layer. And now you'll see it's added a nice little displacement effect badge right here, and if I click on that, I can dial up an amount of displacement that will look just spectacular. I can play with a chromatic spread, and I can even hover over here and enable keyframes for the amount or the soften, and just key those to work really well with my displacement map over time. Now we've used Super Comp in detail in a bunch of other amazing videos on this channel, but the basic idea is that you can add things like color correction, light wrap, diffusion, edge blending, all sorts of wonderful things that'll take your lousy images and make them look super. I can even go into my grime texture and kind of color correct it to look better in the scene, and then even use it to blur and displace a bit of stuff behind, like it was some grease on the glass or something like that. Just so many fun things. And once I've got all of these elements looking like they're kind of in the same universe, I can add a top adjustment layer and then apply some magic bullet looks. And once I'm in the look interface, I can go up to the top here to the search bar and type in the matrix and then pick one of these as a springboard to kind of get this more toward a matrixy vibe. And I'll also do a bit of uh, additional curves adjustment after that. And then I can do one of my very favorite tricks, which is to add Universe Spot Blur, which is basically this little controllable blur blob. But uh, I can move it right over here, and then I can stretch it out to be really tall like this, and then check the Invert button. And now I've got a nice little controllable tilt shift kind of thing. In addition, I could add some CC vignette and really darken out uh, the edges of that screen there. And then, ooh, let's make it letterbox by adding a black solid, little subtract mask that's kind of short and squished like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then, uh, actually on this adjustment layer, I could add the transform effect and put in a few keyframes for the uh, image moves a little bit up and down with that hand. So there's a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of fake motion in there. And here is the final result. And man, I really like this effect. And that's it. That's the tutorial. Join us this week on VFX and Chill. Love y'all.